I always say to people when they ask me that question, like, how could there be hunger in Orange County? I say, do the math. Think about how much it costs to live here and how much a lower wage earner is making. A lot of years ago, you could make a living at close to minimum wage because everything else was priced kind of accordingly. But in the last 20, 30 years, it's gotten way out of whack. And so, so many people, they can work six days a week, they can have two jobs, and they're still not making it. And people increasingly are forced to make a choice. Am I gonna pay the rent today, or am I gonna buy groceries? We really are dealing with food insecurity. And food insecurity is about not knowing where your next meal may come from, not having a sure supply of meals for the day, the week, and the month. For a college student, it may be that your financial aid runs out at the end of the month and you're without food for a week. For an immigrant family, it might be that dad's hours get cut suddenly and you don't have the financial resources to buy food. For a senior, it might be that you have an unexpected medical bill that impacts your budget. The part that gets to me is uh, seniors and uh, children. We did some PSAs at one point, and one that I'll just never forget was a child opening a refrigerator door. <laughs> Sorry, that's really gets to me. A child opening it in the middle of the night and finding nothing in there. So many of the riches of this nation are not available to all of us for many reasons. Um, but food is one that I, I can't find an excuse for why anyone um, doesn't have enough to eat good food. When you can help remove food insecurity as a concern in someone's life, they can focus on the other things that matter in their lives. They can focus on getting their kids to school on time, making sure the kids are prepared to learn, getting a job, getting to work. They don't have to have that as a concern. We've got it covered. Second Harvest has always been there saying to those who are fortunate, help us help the least fortunate. And I think the community has responded to Second Harvest, which is why it's celebrating 40 wonderful years. A food bank is a large, entity whose job it is, is to provide food pantries with the food that they need. Our magic power is to get lots and lots, millions of pounds of food, and then efficiently distribute them through our network. The mission of the food bank is very simple. Feed hungry people. In 1983, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul here in Orange County decided that part of their mission would encompass feeding the poor and the hungry. And they started a food distribution program. They started collecting excess food and distributing it to the people in need. Dan Harney, the founder, he generally did not want any credit. He didn't want to be considered a hero or get any credit for the work he was doing. He just loved the work um, and was so passionate about making sure people were aware that hunger existed in Orange County. When I first started, much of our food was like dented and dinged cans. Back in those days, the food bank accepted anything. Our goal was get in whatever we can and get it onto people's tables. The facility that the food bank was operating out of was this old warehouse. It was, I think it was an orange packing plant in the city of Orange, right by the railroad tracks. And it was great because they had it, but it certainly wasn't effective or efficient. All the while, the building kept getting more crowded and more crowded and it was more difficult to move things around. Those of you who have no idea what that old building was like, it was an unbelievable logistical nightmare to try to do things in. And then we, we began a quest to get a new building. We pursued from the Department of Navy this building on the El Toro Air Base. And they offered it to us, but it took forever to get through the bureaucracy. It was gonna cost like three and a half million dollars to retrofit this building. But a few more years went by, and uh, by the time we actually got access and we could come and do this and start a campaign, uh, the number had risen to about eight and a half million dollars. When we met with Second Harvest Food Bank early on, 
we found that their core principles were totally in concert with ours. They were striving for excellence. They were trying to feed people. They were trying to give people dignity and nutrition. And for me personally, the blessing is to watch and be a very, very, very tiny, maybe just a grain of sand on the beach, part of Second Harvest to allow these things to happen. We were moving from a 50,000 square foot building to 120,000 square feet building. It took years really of not only a capital campaign to raise the money for it, but the planning of a lot of people. And then when it did happen, it was, it was sort of overwhelming, a real thrilling moment. Twenty twenty was an unexpected part of the experience. There's no playbook for something like COVID and what we were experiencing. We really had to band together and innovate our way through. And one of my fond memories and proudest moments was walking out into this distribution center and seeing everybody that was working on payroll or HR matters or in marketing or whatever their role in the organization was right to IT standing at food lines, packing boxes, so we could jumpstart this process while we figured out what to do next. To then scale that up to a much larger format where we uh, partnered with the Honda Center and the Samueli Family Foundation and the Ducks to be able to open the parking lot up and at mass deliver food to thousands of cars on a weekly basis for some 19 weeks in a row. I didn't even know what we were putting together until it happened the first time. And then we were like, oh my, like this is a lot bigger than we thought it was gonna be. On the first day, we had SIG alerts on both sides of the 57. We had police show up that put drones up in the air to figure out how to manage traffic. And we worked through that day, learned from that Saturday and showed up the following Saturday with a better oiled machine. And again, and again, and again, until I was able to just stand back and like a symphony, watch it all happen. They could tell me exactly, like based on how uh, many cars we think, this is how long the distribution is gonna take, this is how many you know, food boxes we're going to give out, this is you know, what their needs were. And I think seeing the faces of people in those cars was very emotional for many of us, but we had a job to do. So we didn't, we didn't have time to cry or lament or, or you know, be afraid for people, except on the last day. I think on the last day we realized the enormity of what we had done. You don't really realize until it was over when you take that breath and you take that step back and you're like, oh wow, I can't believe what we just did and what we were all able to accomplish together. There were a lot of things that we had to do that had never been done and uh, failure was not an option. What we learned during the pandemic, when we had the funds to buy food, we made a very intentional decision to buy healthy foods. It was a no-brainer that we need to make an intentional effort to get good food into the hands of people that are suffering from food insecurity so that they wouldn't devolve into nutritional insecurity and more problems on top of what they already have. So that brought the shift, that brought a shift in the nutrition policy to the food bank, that brought what we call a food plan that revolves around healthy food, produce, eggs, milk, and lean proteins. It led to, you know, what I consider is a groundbreaking project is a 40-acre farm um, very close to here at the University of California where we're actually growing food. Harvest Solutions Farm was launched in August 2021 in partnership with the UC South Coast Research and Extension Center and a local third-generation farmer by the name of Eiji Kawamura. Since then, we have incorporated many more varieties of produce because we recognize our community should have access to fresh produce and we wanna make sure we're delivering something that's dignified, beautiful, and nutrient rich. So those can include yellow squash, zucchini, bell peppers, watermelon, honeydew melon, acorn squash, butternut squash, spaghetti squash, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and broccolini. 
So after product is harvested, it gets loaded up onto a second harvest food bank truck that gets delivered to the distribution center where it will be processed, whether it needs to be refrigerated. That food is then available in less than 72 hours to the community. We have this fantastic farm right in Orange County, not too far from here, off Irvine Boulevard. And it's kind of like a secret farm. It's like nobody knows it's really there. But once you get there, it's like, He'd be blown away. This is a game-changing way of thinking about how we address hunger, not only in our country or not only in our state, but certainly globally. Those most in need will be getting some of the greatest food ever, uh, right off the farm and right into their homes. So the food sourcing team is truly the start of the food banking process. We acquire food through five ways the government, grocery rescue, purchasing, donated, and our farms. I got to call grocery store managers to see if they would give their product that's soon to be expired to Second Harvest and participate in the grocery rescue program. When food gets bruised or if there's you know, a little blemish on it, we call it food surplus because we don't want to call it food waste. And that's how we partner with the Second Harvest Food Bank of Orange County. All of our perishable donations, whether it's produce, milk, dairy, our bakery, our, our fresh aisles, are going to be donated to a family in need right here in Orange County. This food may have a blemish on it. It may just have a bruise that may need just to be cut off, but the rest of it is so nutritious and healthy. Right now, what's happening is we're getting truckloads of food. It happens to be canned goods. And it's like when you go to the grocery store, you bring it into your house and you put it on the countertop. All of the goods, canned goods, are going onto the countertop. We line it up, we make sure that it's the right count in the right expiration code, make sure it's all good and clean before we put it in our back stock. You have these volunteers that come to the food bank literally every day. Folks are retired, students, from all walks of life that want to come give the one resource that's non-renewable their time. And they come here and they work with us and they augment our workforce. Volunteers are probably one of the most important aspects of the food bank. We can't do what we do without volunteers. They help us sort, they help us go through product, they help us find the most dignified product that we have so we can send it out to our communities. First uh, day that I started working at the food bank, I was very excited to be able to come here and to work and provide food for people. Now it's 14 years later and I'm still back at the food bank. It means an awful lot to me. My wife passed a year ago and I was out walking. I was unsure what to do with myself. I walked by, I saw the mural and I came up and asked what I could do to volunteer. I came in here and kind of found a home. The people here are just amazing. They've kind of become a family and I really enjoy myself here. So when you come here to volunteer, it's an event. It's fun, there's music, there's laughter, there's engagement. Without them, we don't do what we do. Our donors, some folks have been giving to us for over 25 years. They're parting with their precious funds to feed people they've probably never met before. That is amazing to me. The first fundraiser, our goal was we wanted to net $5,000. Well, that first year, I think our net was at 60. We thought that was a lot. That's 35 years ago. And that was considered, that was a lot. But now there's- It was a million five last year. It keeps going. It keeps going. What you see back here is our back stock, which is similar to your pantry at home, except for our pantry is like 94,000 square feet. So when it's ready to be picked, we put it onto the pick area, the pick floor, we build the orders so it's ready to go out. So as you can tell, it's really cold in here, but it's really important because like the dry side, we have a cold dock that we bring all of our cold and perishable product in here so it keeps in the cold chain, meaning every step of the way, it stays at the right temperature it should. There has always been the need and the drive to run a very clean operation, to feed people, not make people sick. Our strategy was we had to build our partner network alongside building our capability. Today, this facility has 14,500 square feet of cold and frozen capability. 
almost every partner has greater refrigerated frozen capability than they've ever had. And that's through collective efforts. That enables us to protect the cold chain. Final step in the process. This is our loading dock. So we take the cold and frozen product, we marry it with the dry, the drivers take it, load it onto the trucks, and it goes out to over 30 deliveries. We have almost 300 partners that we work with in the county, and that could range from senior centers, K through 12 schools, colleges and universities, affordable housing complexes, nonprofits, houses of worship, so the wide variety there. And then all of those partners that we work with, they then participate in various different programs that we operate. Being able to give the community the fresh food that Second Harvest has now and the quality of fresh food, it's not like we're getting leftovers from a store. We are getting fresh, really high grade fruits and vegetables and then having the milk and dairy and meats is just key to the health of the whole family. And they don't have to worry about that as much because they know that continuous support will be there. Our drivers start very early in the morning. They have anywhere between four to eight stops a day. And then some of our other drivers who are not doing deliveries that day are doing pickups. So they are going out into the community and picking up from the donors directly. Most people probably would be surprised to know that our trucks in the miles that they traveled last year would have circumvented the earth eight times. So they are true road warriors, our drivers, and they are some of our best ambassadors of our mission. I am a college student and, you know, not being able to have access to food, that's been very difficult. College students shouldn't have to worry about what they're going to eat throughout the day. Like many people in Orange County, I was working a full-time job, everything was smooth sailing, active lifestyle, and then COVID-19 hit and I lost my job. In an instant, we had to rethink how we lived. The worry has been overwhelming. This food bank cannot fail, and we haven't for 40 years. You can't let those people suffer in silence, and Second Harvest has absolutely never walked away. The way they have evolved and changed has been, in my mind, spectacular. On average, we are harvesting about 40,000 pounds of food a week, which equates to about an acre of product every week being harvested and delivered to our community. Today, uh, we employ over 94 people. We have a budget that, with our food donation, is close to 100 million and serves all cities in the county, and last year distributed 33 million pounds of food. Just having access to the food pantry here on my campus has definitely helped me to get through my years here and it's definitely helped me focus on my studies. I have been receiving the goodness and kindness of the organization for the last two and a half years. And if without them, I do not know how we could survive. I really think the best thing that Second Harvest can give to anybody is hope and relieving some of the fears of not having food on the table by providing food. The mural that you see behind me has many symbolic elements. The people that we serve, the food that we produce. It's an important part of our landscape here. But part of it that often gets overlooked are all the little lines in the back. Those lines represent the highways, the byways, the streets of Orange County the very things that connect us each and every day. But that's not the most important thing that connects us. Our shared humanity, our care for each other. And we see that every single day at this food bank. And for that, we owe you all a debt of gratitude. So many of you volunteer, donate money, send us food. That has been so key for the last year during the COVID-19 pandemic, for 40 years. Without you, we simply would not be here. And we will be here as long as Orange County needs us to be, thanks to all of you.